Hi, I'm Paul Heaney, Editorial Director for Fluid Power World. We're here at IFP 2017 in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Joining me today is Jeff Heron, who is VP of Research and Development for Danfoss Power Solutions. Thanks for joining me, Jeff. Thanks, Paul. Yep. So Danfoss has a great booth uh, right at the center of the hall. Tell me a little bit about what you're hearing on the show floor. What's kind of the buzz so far at uh, this IFP? A lot of our uh, a lot of our booth visitors are really talking a lot about the needs for productivity and efficiency benefits okay. in their machines. Mm -hmm. So they're coming to us looking for new new product technology and new systems technology that help them take their machines to another level of productivity. Okay. Probably the other thing that's really popping out with me at this show is the increased focus on data. Interesting. And the utilization of data again. Kind of IoT in the cloud IoT and all that. And okay. Cloud telematic solutions and how. Established machine manufacturers and end users can start to harvest the benefits of uh, data capture and algorithms to, again, it's all about the productivity of the machine, okay. but uh, using it through the data set. So okay. that's, that's new for me in this year sure. compared to the show prior to this. I, I've seen a lot of it too, so that's a great comment. Tell me about uh, Dan Foss Power Solutions. Uh, you know, what, what are the markets that you see you know, in, the, in the coming year that are, are your strongest, your weakest, or where, where are you focusing your, your energies? Yep, good question. So Danfoss Power Solutions today serves many uh, off-highway machine markets. Sure. Agriculture and construction are probably our two largest. Okay. Uh, so this show is very important to us. Um, we're, doing, we're putting a lot of effort right now into designing new machine architectures and applications like wheel loaders and okay. like uh, telehandlers and some of the real fundamental machines that drive the construction segment. Mm -hmm. uh, now that ag is starting to show some signs of life after bit, several yeah. years of being yeah. in the downturn, we're also uh, continuing to stay focused in specifically steering solutions for agricultural tractors. Okay. Um, is one of the technology areas that we feel like we have a real advantage for our customers. Okay. And uh, uh, so those are probably the two main sectors that we're really focused on sure. improving capability in. Is mining still a challenge, do you think? Is that heading forward, or is any any little bit of a bright spot, or you're we're not sure? We're actually starting to see some uptick uh, okay. in the mining sector, which has really been a sign of relief for us. And we've got, right. we've got a pretty strong play in mining with some of the components that we provide to the mining manufacturers, but uh, it seems to be leading the way maybe with the rest of the construction segment here okay. at the start of 2017. Okay. What about the rest of 2017 in general? Do you see this year as kind of a... Uh, a positive turning year for for Dan Foss. What, where where do you you lie on that? I think it's uh you know we, the, the buzzword around is hopefully optimistic. Okay, <laughs> uh, we'll go for that. Uh, um, yeah. I think we started the year wondering if this was going to be similar to 2016 in yeah, our forecasting, yeah. and I think what we've seen so far in the first couple months of the year is things are maybe more optimistic than we had originally thought. Oh, good. Okay. So it's two two months in. Okay. So it's a little early to declare victory. Okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah. But I think we're optimistic for how the year's playing out. All right, that's good. What, and then lastly, Jeff, what are what are the hot button topics for your for your company, or, or, or what are the pain points that, that you see a lot with your customers? Is it is it delivery? Is it uh, price? Is it IoT? You, you mentioned yep. government regulations. What, what what are the things that keep coming back that you all are focusing on? I think what we've seen now from our customers, uh, really in the last year or so, is that we're moving out of uh, all of the vehicle redesigns that have been driven by Tier Four. Okay. And a lot of our OEM customers, their engineering forces have been almost completely dedicated to yeah, incorporating yeah. the new engine technology, which has meant that's created a backlog mm -hmm. of other design capability on these oh, machines. Interesting. Okay. So we're starting to see now a lot of new project opportunities for hydraulic system improvements okay. um, that have been on the back burner for several years. Um, and again, it's driven around how can we improve productivity of our machines, yes. How do we improve the uh, standardization of platforms in our machines so that we can broaden the utilization of systems across many platforms to get mm -hmm. cost leverage? Yeah, yeah. And then the last one was IoT. We're okay. really seeing a lot more customer requests now for really trying to figure out how to build a business model around data and the, and the improvement opportunities and service, for example, from IoT. Definitely. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting to see what's going on at FP 2020. And a lot of these things I think will be implemented and will be in a different world then. It seems to be, yep. Jeff, if uh, people want to find out more about Danfoss Power Solutions, can they go online to do that? And if so, where would they go? You bet. We've got a prominent website at powersolutions.danfoss.com with a wide array of product and system information. Wonderful. And for more need to know engineering videos, you can always visit fluidpowerworld.com. Thanks for joining us.